Hi guys, here Crystal Cox, Whistleblower Media, Investigated Blogger. I'm not able to get back to all your questions, so I want to just talk about a few things that people are asking. Um, one of the things that's probably going to come out in the New York Times today is <clears throat> about a woman named Annie Buell. Now, Annie Buell apparently is telling people that the creditors in the Summit case were happy with the job that Kevin Patrick did. Excuse me. And Annie Buell, the Tennant family, I hope you to research that and I will be providing more of that information on my site for things for you to investigate. I believe they are conflicted and that they were in connection with the trustee. This is Annie Buell and the Tennant family. They sued. They wanted to get in first place and get their money first. So I believe they made some secret deal with the trustee to get paid first. Get all the documents, find the proof of this yourself, but please do not take Annie Buell um, of the Tennant family and whatever she's going to she's saying in the New York Times, please do not take that as hard cold facts. The New York Times guy said, um, I don't call people thugs and thieves in my writing. Um, what do you have to say about that? Well, yeah, I do call people names, but you know, you can take that or leave it, whatever. I have my personal opinion, that's why it's my blog, you know, not your blog. But if you look at the documents and you investigate the case, you could decide this for yourself. Um, I have a feeling what the New York Times guy is doing is um, he's, um, he thinks, I think he thinks, in my opinion, I feel that he believes that I'm not necessarily media because I don't call all sides, okay? So I don't get my pen and paper out and I don't call everybody, okay? Well, um, I would encourage the New York Times or any journalist out there in traditional media that really wants the facts not to talk to Annie Buell, Crystal Cox, or Kevin Patrick but to get the documents, to read the emails, to read the correspondence, to read the trust documents, to read the depositions in the case, to read the objection to the fees. You know, get all this proof and read it for yourself. Don't just call a bunch of people and get a bunch of hearsay and call it news in the New York Times, right? That's not really news. Also remember, I'm not on trial for any emails. I'm not on trial for um, all of my blogs. I'm not on trial for ObsidianFinanceSucks.com. Please keep in mind. Um, one of the questions that he asked me was why, with so much financial liability out there, why do I still have that blog post up? Well, I wasn't court ordered to take it down for one. And one thing that didn't seem to enter this case, ObsidianFinanceSucks.com, I got a summary judgment on. The whole site. Really? Well, you know, look at the case and decide if that's what's the truth. I don't know, because, you know. So, that post that I was on trial for, that the jury gave them two and a half million dollars for, was on ObsidianFinanceSucks.com the day before. It's also on several other blogs. I was not ordered to take that post down. I was not asked to take that post down. And so, because a jury says that isn't true, or because I, then should I take it down? Well, it might be prudent. It probably would be a good idea. But the thing is, is I want the world to look at it, okay? I am the case study for the world on this. I do not believe that one CPA in Oregon giving his opinion that that post was false is worth two and a half million dollars. There was no documents provided. There was no, um, you know, all of my stuff was certainly not looked at and it was not looked at by that CPA. Right? And I didn't testify either, which is another question. Why didn't I testify? I'm going to talk about that. But the jury saying that, this, that I defamed him and that it was false based on Obsidian Finance on the stand telling them that it was and telling them that they lost all this money. And one CPA with the report saying that um, it was wrong and then another guy, Robert, I think, Magigirl or whatever, he just gave his opinion on the fact that, well, people could see it and they could determine a bad decision from it. Hmm. So, and I will share all that stuff with you guys as well as the court transcripts. Right now, obviously, money is um, an awkward situation. So, um, and also today is, um, what is today? It's December, I think today is December 9th. The judgment has been filed. I have 30 days to file my intent for appeal. I definitely will be filing for an appeal. And at this point, uh, I'm going to be doing it pro se. I um, would like an attorney, but I believe that most attorneys are probably afraid of this because of the establishment and the political power. And so far, things are getting a little bit crazy. Um, anyway, let's. I'm, I want to answer some of the questions that <clears throat> people have been asking me. Okay, um, is blogging what I do for a living? 
I have blogged for five years. In my real estate brokerage, I blogged for a living, yes, to promote my real estate. I blog for the greater good, alternative medicine stuff. I blog a whole bunch of, of things and I do it for a living. I used to have Google ads on all my sites, but um, I think Prosecutor Rose and um, uh, Warner Brothers, Intel, some of these big companies, I think, <laughs> pressured Google because Google um, made me remove some of my ads from some of my sites because, um, you know, so, <laughs> so I don't necessarily make tons of money from that anymore. I don't really make any money from Google ads, really. I have Google ads on some of my sites, but um, I make a living. Also, I sell a nutritional su supplement. You can go to www.dailyarginine.com. I sell a nutritional supplement in which dissolves artery plaque. So basically, I syndicate my own sites, okay? I create relevant targeted information. I write a lot about arginine and alternative medicine, and I make a living from that. I also make a living as an investigative blogger, contracted from people who pay me to do investigative blogging research, and, um, and people that... Um, well, you know, I, I would like to make a living as a search engine reputation manager because I'm very good at it, but I don't make a living that way. I have searchenginereputationmanager.com and um, a whole bunch of sites related to me doing brand management. I wanted to do that to make some money, but I've never really done that for a living, but, but I would like to. I'm definitely, um, a lot of companies like Prosky Rose have hired, um, you know, Defender, Reputation Defender and all those people to fight me in the search engines, and so that's been kind of a little war. Anyway, I write about a lot of stories. I write about, you know, I view it. I view it TV, TV you can go to, uh, www.deniedpatent.com. I write about internal documents on Intel. I got philipfalcone.com, and I write about a lot about Light Squared and the FCC and all that. I have mssspectrum.com, and I write about um, what went on with the GPS interference of that. And there's a lot, tons of conflict of interest where Verizon and um, Clearwire were trying to shut down um, Light Squared because they don't want them to enter their zone. And I've, I've written a lot about that and some of my sites I've kind of set to draft and I'm reworking some things. But basically, uh, you know, Philip Falcone's kind of a newer billionaire and so the old billionaires, AT&T, Clearwire, Verizon, I think kind of banded together because they wanted to stop Light Squared and Light Squared is like the new um, they're supposed to be the biggest wireless company in the world. I mean, their, their technology is terrestrial, right? So there will be nowhere that you lose the, the cell phone, and they're going to provide it cheaper, right? So, of course, AT&T and Verizon and all these people want to shut them down. So I've written a, a lot about Light Squared and, and uh, Philip Falcone. You know, he, was, uh, he made his billions from betting against the secondary mortgage market, and I've written a lot on that. I have interviewed Philip Falcone, and so basically... Um, also, let's see, Tim Blixeth in the Yellowstone bankruptcy, I have interviewed him. I've talked to people in the Terra Star bankruptcy and the Laurel bankruptcy, uh, insiders in the Petters bankruptcy. Uh, the iView technology was actually stolen in a bankruptcy uh, through the en Enron collapse was regarding a technology that was stolen. I've written about a lot of things. This isn't my first um, thing I've written about. Obsidian Finance Group is going to be kind of what looks like is the biggest thing. It's certainly not the biggest dollar story I write about. The biggest dollar story and the most heartwarming story is I view it because they invented this invention and this involves all the politics in the world. I mean, Google Christine Anderson whistleblower. This is a woman that was in the courts in New York and she came forward and said that they were whitewashing for certain protected attorneys. And nobody's really listening to this stuff. The New York Attorney General that was involved in some of this ignored it. They were conflicted. Now he's the governor. I mean, this story is huge. And these people that invented it, they've got no rights to the technology. Plus, they ran out of their home. Their cars were bombed. I mean, it's a really, really big story. And that's at iviewit.tv. And like I said, denied, w, yeah, I think you have to use the W's, www.deniedpatent.com. It's a very very big story about a soul, stolen technology. Now I found this story through writing about uh, the, the summit bankruptcy. Before the summit bankruptcy I was writing about real estate industry. I have real estate industry whistleblower.com. I have YouTube channels. I think real estate confessions. I have whistleblower media of course this one. And I was advocating for the real estate consumer. And the bank, the company that went bankrupt was a 1031 exchange company. So that is of public interest to all real estate agents. So I wrote about it in my real estate industry whistleblower stuff. That, that's how insiders came to me and told me the story. 
Okay, so from writing about that story in the amazing blog of Stephanie DeYoung, a whistleblower uh, that exposed this, she, she's a CPA. She's one of the smartest and most organized women I have ever met. Um, yes, she was uh, the daughter of one of the principals, but her blog was not just, you know, saying, um, Kevin Patrick did bad and this person did bad and this happened and that happened. Her and four or five other people filed an objection to the fees, which is in here, part of this, and with a whole bunch of documents, right? It had bills, it had internal emails, uh, depositions, tons of information, and they objected to the millions of dollars that Tonkin Torp and that Obsidian Finance were charging. Her blog had all kinds of documents and videos. It had videos of meetings that Kevin Patrick was at. He set her up on criminal charges with that. And yeah, I feel he conspired with the Bin DA to set her up. She eventually had to get up and drop, give up and drop the videos because she has kids. She can't do this. And they pressured her so much, I believe, through, um, through those connections. Her objection to the fees was eventually dismissed because they pressured her life so much. And like I said, she has children. She can't, she can only go so far. Okay, so the day after the trial, she dropped her blog because she can't take a two and a half million dollar judgment, right? So, but every document and everything that was on that blog was brilliant. Uh, any judge, any investigator, the FBI, anybody that looked at that, that read it, that was impartial, would see that this is the most amazing thing in the world. And this blog that is now dropped from this amazing woman will go down in history as making the US courts, more the bankruptcy courts, transparent for the first time ever. Through her case, I started writing about the Petters case. All the bankruptcies that I now write on over the last two or three years is because her case and writing about it got others to tell me their story by documents and cases. People send me mass amounts of documents. People mail me documents. I'm not just calling them and getting their sides. I'm not, that's not how I do business. The New York Times says, well, we don't call him a thug and thief. Yeah, but do you read any documents? Do you read? Do you study this stuff? Do you post internal documents or do you just want trash talk from both sides? And neener, neener, and she said, and he said, and oh my God, or do you really want to find the story and tell it? You know, I mean, will your owners let you? I mean, Philip Falcone, doesn't he, isn't he one of the owners of the New York Times? I mean, are you even presenting his story right? I don't think you are, okay? And Senator Grassley and all this stuff going on now with the pressure that's on Light Squared, this is just all bull. This is just all Verizon and AT&T and Clearwire and all the big muckety mucks. And you know, Craig McCaw that's at Clearwire, he is a big owner in AT&T. It's all the good old boys. It's the old money billionaires against the new money billionaires. And you know, I have trash talked Philip Falcone. Of course, you know, it's what I do. But I think he's a good man, and I think he wants to do the right thing to the best of his abilities in a lot of industries where he can't necessarily. And I don't, I don't really know exactly. I, I encourage you to read these documents and study all these bankruptcies. The U.S. bankruptcy courts are the most corrupt courts really out there. And for the trustee to get the money, the model of corruption, people have called me with $30,000 bankruptcies and billions of dollars in bankruptcy. It's the same model. Company goes bankrupt. They're the evildoer. Victims are the creditors, and the investors in the company. In the middle is a trustee, usually one man, one woman, in control of everything, answers to no one. So the transparency in the U.S. bankruptcy courts will be changed forever by the blog of this one woman, okay, which is now shut down because of this pressure. But this pressure won't shut me down. I got ObsidianFinanceSucks.com. I got a summary judgment on that. So, you know, they can take me for everything. They can, you know, set me up and get me jailed. You know, the story lives on. The truth lives on. Find it for yourself. I don't, I don't care if you believe me or not. Go find the truth and make the world a better place. Anyway, I'm going to stop this one, and I'm going to do another one here real quick um, about some more of your questions. Hope you're having a great day out there.